I'm Dr. Timothy Johnston. If you're watching this video, it's because either you're interested in what fluoride is all about, or perhaps it's because you sat in my office and said, I don't want fluoride, I'm not a kid anymore. You need to be informed of the benefits of fluoride and what it's really doing. So number one, let's back up a little bit. The presence of fluoride in drinking water occurs naturally in many locations around the country and around the world. Fluoride is a mineral, it comes out of the rock, and if it's in the rock that lives under you and you're getting your water out of the ground, you've got fluoride. One part per million of fluoride versus water is what's ideal. That's been determined through scientific studies. And in communities that don't have that, they're adding fluoride at one part per million. What does that help? It doesn't do a thing for the teeth that are in your mouth. Let's start with that. So don't say, oh, my water's fluoridated, I'm good. At one part per million, it is not good for your teeth. It's not bad, it just doesn't do anything. What it's good for is the developing enamel in children and babies. When your teeth first start to grow, the layer on the outside that we call enamel is made up of something called hydroxyapatite. If there's fluoride present in that, some of that hydroxyapatite is laid down instead as a chemical called fluorapatite. And fluorapatite is four or five times denser and more resistant to the acids that wash out our teeth as, as cavities than hydroxyapatite is. So the fluoride plays a, plays a huge role there. In every community that's ever been fluoridated, you've seen the cavity rate go right down. Is it a poison? People say, oh, fluoride's a poison. It's in rat poison. And you know what? It is. It's in rat poison at concentrations that are just like straight fluoride. So if you eat too many apple seeds, you'll die. If you eat too many pear seeds, you'll die. For that matter, if you drink too much water in one day, you'll die. So let's not get crazy about fluoride's a poison. It is a beneficial component, and certainly at one part per million. But let's say you're not a baby, and if you're watching this, you're not. So at least you know a little bit about that. You get fluoride in other places, right? Fluoride is also available in your toothpaste. Why would we put fluoride in toothpaste? And by the way, the concentration there is 1,500 parts per million, 1,500 parts per million. It's because the acids that are forming from the bacteria on your teeth, when you eat sugar, the bacteria eat it, and they poo out an acid product, and it eats away at the enamel. It eats away by dissolving the crystalline structure of the hydroxyapatite component, the mineral, on your tooth. If there is no fluoride present, some of that hydroxyapatite will be laid back down in the natural reparative process. So the outside microscopic layer of your teeth is always going through this sort of push-pull or give and take with the surface chemicals. If fluoride is present for a little while during your day, while you're brushing your teeth or rinsing your mouth, for example, then some of that hydroxyapatite that's washed out is going to be replaced with fluorapatite. Again, much denser, much stronger, and much more resistant to chemicals caused from plaque acids, the, the acid that falls in the teeth. So you're doing yourself a huge favor by brushing with a fluoride toothpaste at a concentration of the max that they can sell legally by the FDA is 1,500 parts per million. Then you've got what we give in the office. When you're in for your checkup and cleaning and we offer you a fluoride treatment, that fluoride treatment is actually 26,500 parts per million. And at that concentration, there's like this huge, big push of fluoride ions or fluorapatite into the surface of your tooth, giving you a whole new charge, a great big charge in the healing capacity of the tooth and the resistance to future plaque acids. So why adults versus kids? When I was a kid, I was referred to as being in the cavity prone years, and I'm sure you've heard that. And that was from the age of about you know, eight, six or eight when the adult teeth started coming in until you were a teenager and maybe stopped eating sugar every time you possibly could get your hands on it. Those were the cavity prone years, and my dentist, when I was a kid, spent a lot of his time working on kids. I can tell you I spend very little of my time working on kids these days. There weren't a lot of senior citizens in my dentist's day that had their own teeth. You lost teeth in early age because care wasn't then what it is now. So you didn't have a lot of adult work, you didn't have a lot of adult teeth. Now, seniors, as we're growing, our baby boomer population, they're not willing to have dentures for the most part. They're not willing to lose teeth. They save their teeth. They get fillings, they get root canals, they get crowns. All this stuff is done to it. And a crown is not impervious to a cavity. The crown itself is, but the connection to where it meets with the natural tooth is still a junction of natural tooth, and that's very susceptible to cavities as well. Interestingly, as our mouths dry out, as we get older, a lot of things you know, don't work like they used to, and saliva is one of them, especially if you're taking any kind of heart medication. Those heart medications also cause dry mouth for many of them. The gum line is what suffers. The gum line of your tooth, right where the gum and the teeth meet, that's the area most prone to cavities. So with all I've just told you, what are the new cavity prone years? My senior citizens. They have their teeth way longer than they ever used to. Their mouths are drying out, 
and their cavities are forming at the gum line. And what's the one place that fluoride helps more than anywhere in the whole mouth? At the gum line. So if you're thinking, I'm not a kid anymore, I don't need fluoride, you're, you're backwards. You aren't a kid anymore, so you really need fluoride. I hope that helps you understand what's going on in there. Fluoride is beneficial at any age. We encourage it for all of our patients from first checkup to last checkup. It will help you. It will benefit you. We wouldn't be recommending it if it didn't. Thanks for watching.